artist. I graduated three years ago from uh, MACA in Utrecht. And I'm going to tell you tonight something about my work. Uh, first, my work in general. Um, most of my art projects are a bit on the conceptual side. Um, for instance, this project is a, a pill which cures every disease imaginable, which I created by collecting medication online, just asking people to send me their medication. So I made one giant pill out of it, and actually if you eat it, you'll die, and all your problems will be solved. Uh, this project basically was to question how easily people would trust me. They didn't know me at all. I was just using the excuse of the school art project for them uh, to help me out. Another project, which is actually on view now uh, in Utrecht at Gary Sana, is uh, the world's most exclusive membership. It's a highly exclusive club, which you can try to join online uh, via the website www.theworldsmostexclusivemembership.com and it's actually that exclusive that it excludes everyone but still uh, more than a thousand people try to apply and in the application process you have to fill in your personal details and uh, select reasons why you want to become a member and most of the people actually didn't know why because the website doesn't give you any information um, this is a, the current website view, just for your information. And here you can see a list of all the things you'll have to, what well, if the demo would be a bit sharper. You could see like name, surname, date of birth, street, uh, name, house number, etc. etc. Also eye color and favorite ice cream, just to add some personal notes. And next to that, to raise funds for my art projects, I design crochet patterns of which you can see some over here. And, well, let's hop on to my work here project. Um, in 2013, I was asked to uh, create a new work for the exhibition New Track Down Under. And I always had this idea, you know, this wondering whether it would be possible to base a novel about on someone who I don't know at all, just based on the information that a person shares online. Because in Dutch you have this saying, you could write a book about it, you can have a book of schrijven, which um, you would normally use if you know someone who talks on and on and on about their private lives. Um, so I was just wondering if you could apply that on someone you wouldn't know at all. So I've also thought the only way to figure this out is to just, you know, try it. And um, on a random Monday afternoon, I was uh, on Twitter and I was looking for people who were watching TV at the time, the Dutch uh, version of that is TV Kijker. So I just uh, did a search query for uh, watching TV and a couple people popped out and I decided to follow like five of them in order to see if they would you know, uh, create enough content. So. They would produce that much content, it would be worthwhile to write a novel based on them. And, oh yeah, so in the end, I found the 17 year old Rohir Hogeforst from Hogeveen. And at that time, when I started following him, he tweeted about 80 times a day. And every other day, he would share an Instagram photo on his Instagram account. And at that time, this is a more recent screenshot of his tweet, a Twitter account, he had already shared about 40, 50,000 tweets about his private life. You know, lots of people also share a lot of things on Twitter, but most of it is it's like opinionated stuff, what they think of certain news events, but this guy was just sharing everything about whatever he did during the day. So um, I started following him on the, I scrolled back on his Twitter feed and the first tweet I could find was from April 1st. So I uh, decided to get that as a starting date because also I had to finish the project at the end of August for the exhibition. So after three months of following, Rohir has shared uh, 5,638 tweets and 137 Instagram posts, which was 
way more than enough to, you know, to base the novel on it. So, um, basically, I downloaded his entire Twitter and Instagram profiles and I just printed them out. Also, in case for when he would take them offline. Uh, well, I didn't like staring at the computer for a huge amount of time. So, um, basically, I started writing, just typing things in uh, Word. Uh, here you can see a photo of the book. It has three chapters, one for every month. I actually got some copies of the book here, which you can also uh, view at the bar later on. The novel is called The Three Months in the Life of Rogier, The Three Maanden in het Leven van Rogier in Dutch. So it contains, like I said, three chapters, one for April, May and June. So, yeah, there are also eight uh, replicas of Instagram pictures included in the book. Because I couldn't use any of the original uh, quotes from Rogier or the original images. So also the text, it's based on what he said. If he wrote something down like, I'm going to the grocery store, I made something like, I went to the grocery store. I've been tweaking it a little bit so it becomes my text and my copyright in the end. So, um, for instance, when he would go to McDonald's, the original photo is on the right. I went to McDonald's too and just ordered more or less of the same things, took a picture with more or less the same Instagram filter on it and well the vibe of the picture stays the same but the copyright became mine. He played the same as I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so and in the end, um, like I showed lots of people the original pictures and my replicas and every time the original ones on the right by the way and lots of people didn't even recognize his or mine anymore. So, some drop Dutch candy, <coughs> Italian ice cream. And so after uh, two and a half months of hard, hard working, the book was finished and the Utrecht down under uh, exhibition took place. So I figured it would be time, you know, to inform up here I wrote a book about him. Because <laughs> up to this point he wasn't aware of fact that I was writing a novel about it because I didn't find it, find it was necessary. Mm -hmm. I used only messages that he spread publicly because I, for instance, I couldn't use his Facebook account because that one was closed off for friends only. But he shared the same things anyway in, on Twitter and Instagram. And also I didn't want him to alter his behavior once he would find out that he, had, he was followed a couple months or a couple weeks and still had some weeks following uh, ahead. And also, uh, I don't, didn't want my behavior to be altered after I found out his response. Because I had no clue how this guy would respond. And for instance, if he would become very upset, would it alter my behavior? Would I, would I withdraw the project from the exhibition if he would be making threats? You name it, so I decided to wait until the first exhibition weekend. And um, then things started to move rather fast because on the opening night, uh, this is a picture from the opening night, and as you can see, there's no one sitting behind the table because my guard was late, like three hours late. So I was sitting there myself, and all of a sudden, this guy walks in. And sometimes with the exhibition visitors, they, they've got a lot of, you know, talks about how important they are and how they can help you become famous and all of that. So this guy was just saying something like, yeah, if you want I can get you on TV. I was like, sure. <coughs> I didn't really buy it. I wasn't really buying it, but then um, apparently he was he well uh, connected to all kinds of people. So three days after that, and one day after I notified both here via Twitter, um, which you can see here, actually I did it via a separate account, so my followers wouldn't see me notifying the boy and wouldn't harass him or anything. But after that, um, I appeared on the Dutch television talk show, Nevenet van Brink, with an average uh, 
viewer audience of 750,000. Um, I was nervous as hell. Uh, because what here hadn't replied yet. And, um, according to his Twitter feed, we, which we were anxious, anxiously checking just minutes before the show aired, because it was live television as well. Um, well, he tweeted that he went off to bed, so we were kind of disappointed. But uh, after all, it, uh, it turned out that both his parents were actually watching the show, but convinced themselves that it, what, this project wasn't about their son. <laughs> so, um, in, after, in a couple days after the show, more and more people um, said to Luffy, well, yeah, this really looks like you. And here you can see his first response. Because also people were starting this small manhunt on Twitter. First to find my original tweets to Luffy here, and then telling Luffy here about it. And um, over there, out of the first message, Son Victor says, no public tweet where at Gunsprojekt, my former Twitter account, now it's at Joyce Mobile, by the way, uh, where we're telling about the book and she isn't followed by someone named over here. So I don't know, didn't really trust me and I well, I said, yeah, I tweeted him by a different account. And all of a sudden over here comes in and says, Well, I'm aware of it. Ha ha. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I see what are your first thoughts. And well, first he thought it was a joke. But then he found out it wasn't, and he kind of liked it. So that's that's good. <laughs> and um, after like one and a half, one and a half week later, I uh, actually met him in his uh, local town, Hove, and uh, we exchanged some thoughts on the project. He was well, it was a really great meeting because I followed this guy for a couple months and. Also, when he, he was still in high school back then, so when he had to, to take some tests and he would tweet about how difficult they were, I was like really hoping for him to get a result. <laughs> and then after a week, he would post a result and um, just you could really start, you know, following him. And I, I knew a lot of things about him, but he didn't know anything about me except for that he saw me on television a couple of days after the broadcast. And so he was kind of like, mm, I don't know what I have to do with this person. So also a funny thing, what I found out when meeting him was that he doesn't share anything on Twitter because he doesn't uh, tweet about smoking. Because at that time his parents uh, weren't allowed to know that he was a smoker because he was a character that might cost him, you know, his, his given driver's lessons. So. <laughs> Uh, this is actually um, both here and me, while well, I'm taking a picture with an Uncle Brabant interview the local uh, news station, this, this province's local news station actually, which was quite funny because I'm born in Den Bosch, in the hospital of Den Bosch. I've never moved, lived in the south during my entire life, but still um, Uncle Brabant thought it was a great idea to have this, well, artist from Brabant. <laughs> <laughs> and they drove all the way to Hoge Veen, which is quite close to Friesland. You can't really get any further than that. So that was quite funny. And we also had to act, uh, meeting each other for the first time. <laughs> which was really weird. So, and also this is the item we made about it. It's like most, uh, like artist from the most writes a book according to tweets three months out of the life of here. So yeah, basically that that's my presentation.